Hi, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Tom Stewart, Smart Business Moves. I'm with uh, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And we've got Alonzo Adams with us today. Hey, Alonzo. Hey, Tom. How are you? Hey, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for joining us. We uh, started the discussion last Tuesday on racism in America. We talked a lot about uh, some history and the whys and the hows in terms of how we got to where we are. Didn't dig very deep on action items and things that we can be doing as, as, as business owners to make a positive difference. So uh, that's our intent and that's our, our goal and that's our purpose for being here today that uh, we'll, we'll go back and we'll, we'll, we'll touch upon some of the discussion from last Tuesday, but we want to take it a step further and uh, talk about things that we can be doing as business owners to, uh, to make positive change. Um, before I get too deep though i want to see if i can share our schedule for the balance of the week because you know during this time of unprecedented events sometimes you know you kind of get get uh, i know that we're going to get really uh deep into this and we're going to be up against the hour before we know it and i just don't want to miss this um Karina Neff was with us yesterday, and if uh, you missed that, I would strongly encourage you to go back and look at uh, yesterday's Facebook Live. Uh, she's a young lady, has a uh, really rocking business in uh, Washington, D.C., and there's a lot to be learned if you're interested in diversifying your business and getting into uh, commercial cleaning. She's doing it in a, in a rather significant way, as we just... Uh, and not just that. Also, one more thing about Karina, because... It wasn't just about diversifying. It was also about making things happen. Like, like she was a very strong presence for, you know, I don't know how to do this stuff and don't care, doing it anyway, making it happen and making it happen in, in a really big way. I've already quoted her twice today. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was a great, it was a great Facebook Live. She gave a yeah. number of examples where she had the courage to get out there not even really, you know, knowing for sure what it was she was doing, but she had the courage to to take the risk, to take the chance, the courage to to fail. And you know, how do you get really big accounts? Well, you start off by bidding on really big accounts and losing the bid process, and that's how you eventually win them. And uh, she's I, got. I think she's waiting on a thirty-four million dollar contract right now. Is that right, Tom? Was it thirty-four million? Thirty-four, thirty-four million out of about eight million square feet of uh, space. Yeah. So that that's something right there, y'all. You want to listen to that gal talk? Yeah. Go back and go back and catch that. Alonzo's with us today. We're going to uh, be jumping into the action items that we can be doing to. Uh, I'll make a difference with uh, racism and the social issues that we are uh, dealing with. And tomorrow is Chris Willett. Liz, share a little bit about Chris. So Chris owns Alpine Maids in um, Denver, Colorado. And he is making, so Chris is all about making big changes. He's like, he gets a hair in his bonnet. I'm, I'm sure that's not a correct thing, but a bee in his bonnet. What? A bee in his bonnet. <laughs> and he begins making big changes. Uh, I was working with him as a one-on-one -on -one coaching client about a year and a half ago. I started working with him, and maybe a little longer. And he decided that, like we were talking about, how he really needed to optimize his, his schedule. And... One week later, he had, I don't remember how many clients, 300 maybe. He had just changed them all and completely optimized that schedule based on drive times, moved people over to the days that he wanted them to. And you guys know what a big what a big chore that is because most of the time when I try to talk to people about this, they're like, yeah, but these ladies only want to be clean on Friday or Monday or my people won't go there. You don't understand. They only want this employee. You know, all of the I don't understand. Chris had that done in one week. Right now, he's switching from teams to solos and bam, he's just making it happen. So uh, you guys probably noticed this theme. I love a lot. So he makes things happen. Just talking about that with Karina. And now here I am saying it again with Chris. I, I really love that. Just making it 
happened mentality. Um, but Chris has done a lot of um, investigating with people on a lot of different types of research to find out what's going to be better for different types of companies based on a lot of different criteria. And he's going to share a lot of that with us tomorrow. Are you, are you teams? Are you solos? Are you big teams, small teams? Why? What you're thinking and, and how does that work? And, and so what you might be able to get some insight into what you should be doing. Oh, hey, Karina. Karina's with us today. Thank you for joining us. Rosemary's here. Danet. Ernie's here. Hey, Ernie. Bridget. We're going to have a big crowd today. Well, we had people telling us yesterday they were going to be here. So we kind of knew we were going to have a good group. Bill Gelderman is a friend of the residential cleaning industry. He's a friend of ours. He uh, owns a company. Uh, they do assessments and testing. Uh, one of their big assessments is the Orion, which is uh, uh, an assessment that helps uh, determine candidates for hire if they've got uh, characteristics that are going to be be positive for your business. If there's any uh, thing in this assessment that uh, it, the assessment will help you determine if they have any propensity for theft, drug use, uh, being uh, lax on following safety procedures, uh, how they respond to uh, following direction, authority, things like that. And it's normalized and statistically validated. So, I mean, it actually has some, some real efficacy and it's, it's cool. And she, he, um, Liz, I guess you work with him on the uh, disc assessments, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. He, he's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, you're going to have to be on the, on the Facebook live to be able to uh, get the full impact of Bill. Uh, he, he's a giver. Bill is one of those people that whatever you need, he's going to give you more than you even asked for. He, he's just, that, that's who he is at heart. He, he works with his with his son, and the uh, name of the company is The Steering Group. You'll, you'll learn more about that next week. And Friday is on the spot, our rapid fire Q&A session where Liz, myself, and our super secret special guest, who you'll have to uh, be here on Friday to find out who it is, you just get one minute to answer your, your, your best and toughest questions. I do have a, a hint as to who our surprise guest will be on Friday. And I want to tell you all that she is a star in our industry. Very good. And if anybody wants to guess, go ahead. And if you, you guess, you get a VIP suite. To, you get to ask the first question for uh, on yeah. Friday. Oh. I was waiting like, to hear about that. I know. I was waiting to hear about that too. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> all right, so, let's get to it. Alonzo, you know, when this whole COVID thing started, we were just like, from one day to the next, it seemed like a week's worth of stuff happened. And you know, I mean, COVID's still out there. My goodness, there's a lot of places. I'm down here in South Carolina. Each day, the numbers get bigger than they were the day before. But no, uh, no big insight. So that's not that's not going away. That's just getting worse. However, that's not the only only thing that we're dealing with. There's a lot of other things going on. It just seems like there's so much going on with uh, racism and social issues, and you know, that's all evolving and and. You know, what, are, what have we missed in the last week? Well, it's been a lot going on. We had um, Juneteenth that just passed. And what was quite interesting about that is that a lot of people didn't even know, know what it was. You know, it's like, what is it? And um, companies brought attention to it. And some big companies did a, a very good job of actually recognizing that day as well as giving their employees a chance to actually take time to learn more about black history and learn things about their black coworkers and get more of a feeling of what they go through and some of their, their, uh, their experiences. So I, I thought that was great. I saw um, one of my uh, banks do that. I got the emails as well. They, they shut down early for they could give people enough time to actually go and conversate and have
have some type of dialogue in regards to things that's taking place and things that's happening. I think the biggest thing is what we see that's going on right now is that it's about listening, taking time to listen and understand and have dialogue and to, and to be comfortable with it and to be okay to have those conversations with your friends, um, you know, your coworkers, just, just to let our guards down and have, have open dialogue. I have a, an interesting story. And my interesting story is that most of my employees are from Latin America. So when, um, when they came, came to work for me, you know, you're paying them, they do the job, they do the work, you take them through the training and you really think you understand them. And this is, the problems that have occurred and got to this point. You don't know everything about where they come from. You don't know everything about their culture. You don't know everything about their beliefs and their upbringings. To really know them and to establish a deeper relationship with them, it required some time. And it required for me to really listen and hear them out and be, be genuinely interested in what they had to say. And then, of course, it's, it's different. It's, it's different from my beliefs. It's different from, from, from my culture and some, and some of my values. So, but when you take time to listen and embrace what they're saying to you and, and be committed to really fully giving them your undivided attention, man, does that make a difference. And, and the way your employees uh, respond to you and the way that they actually bond bond together with you and 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 commit to to the company and totally give the best effort uh, possible is because they see someone that truly uh, was genuine, someone that took the time to listen to understand and not just say, oh well, I've been to Mexico before, I, I've been to Brazil before. That's not what it's about, and it's not about you know I have a Mexican friend. And that's where some of these problems came about, where someone say, oh, I got a black friend. I got a couple of black friends. You, but have you really spoken to them? Do you really understand their story? Do you really understand their journey? Do you understand their community? Do you understand what they go home to and their experiences? Because what my staff goes home to, I don't go home to. So what they experience, I don't experience. But once I hear and, I, and they share that with me, it, it opens up my mind, my mind, I get a complete different understanding and I have a different compassion, a totally different compassion. So I think that these companies that actually did that, I think it was huge, they didn't have to do it, but they're, they're making moves that they can fully engage with some of the staff that they have that has been going through um, these, uh, this, uh, this struggle. And because you think about it, friends that I have that's at work, they went back to work from seeing uh, these incidents that have happened and occurred. They went back to work emotionally disturbed. They went back with, with a certain anger. They went back uh, feeling as though, you know, they, they, needed, they needed to express, they needed to unload, they needed some way to really uh, express their feelings about what they were going through. And if you're just saying, hey, come on, get back to work, get to work, you know, you're really missing a point and you're missing an opportunity. And that's an opportunity to really connect. Yeah, an opportunity to show that you care, I guess. I mean, a big part of it is is just establishing and, and, and behaving in a way that, that, that shows that you care. Absolutely. You know, it's you know, it's one thing is like we said before, to have the values on the walls, and it's another thing to live those values. So if you really say that you know you care show that you care, you know, show it through actions, not just words. And just to say that, you know, you gave someone the day off, is that, is that, is that care? It's care when you're looking at what the, what the problem was, because if someone had a problem at home or an issue and they came to me and they were expressing that they have some, some deep family problems, I, I'm, I'm going to give them the time. And if it requires to saying, Hey, you know what? I understand what, I understand what you're dealing with. And here's the day off. That's what I would do because that's my moment because we don't always, again, like I said, get those moments. But when you do get the moments, what did you do? Did you show up? Well, and that might not be the right answer for everybody. You know, if you have a small company and you only have two employees and you really can't afford to let somebody have that day off, 
there's still ways that you can make people believe that you care. I mean, a lot of times just a conversation, you know, just an open conversation, just asking the question, how are you doing? That is so impactful for so many people. Not, so how are you doing? Yeah, okay, uh -huh, good luck. Not that, but how are you doing? Yes. Do you need to talk? Can we talk? You know, that can go such a long way and, and such a, a, make such a bigger impact. So it doesn't have, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to have money to be able to do these things. It's not just big companies, which is why we want to bring it here today. A lot of times what we see when when companies are trying to build their culture, they're thinking it's it's going to be so expensive. I'm going to have to buy these things or spend this money. And it doesn't have to be about that. So no, I just wanted to point that out. It really doesn't. And, you know, I saw some business owners that were on Facebook and they were showing, they were actually uh, sharing their experiences with actually doing a deep dive into black history. And some of them were sharing things that, um, again, it's not taught in school. So they had no clue that these things even occurred or how they happened. And they started to uh, put the puzzle together. And then they start to say, oh, okay, that's why this is happening. That's why this occurred. This is why they're doing what they're doing. This is what they're saying. And, and they had no clue that these events happened. I saw someone post um, something that happened in Tulsa where they totally destroyed the place. You know, and there was things about what happened with Black Wall Street. And there's no, there's never been any discussion in school. And again, you know, I went to school. I'm 50 years old. But when I went to school, they're not teaching any of that. And plus, we didn't have a Black History Month. So they just started a Black History Month. And even the Black History Month that they're having, they, they again, they're starting it at a certain point now. They're just not going to go all the way back. But that information is very relevant to when you start to put the pieces together for the dynamics of the Black community and the Black family. Because a lot of times people say, well, why, why is the father missing from the uh, Black families? There's reasons behind this. And if you don't do your proper research and know your history, then you're going to be a little bit clueless about some of these events that have taken place. Some of these things you look at and you say, why has there been an issue between, you know, uh, minorities and police? It, well, it goes way back. It goes back to back to the reason why we even created the police. And this is where people don't know this information. So I think it's important to know your history and just to do some education on, on other cultures. I think that just makes you a better person. I just think the most interesting people I know in life, they're, they're culturally diverse. And, and they want to know about other cultures. And, and they have a lot to offer and a lot to share. And it, something that you're, you're talking about, but I want to like just pinpoint more, more closely, is that curiosity factor. So the reason why it's important to find out why a lot of times people are resisting that. I don't want to hear why you're just trying to convince me or, you know, whatever the, the curiosity factor is huge. When you feel curious, you win because your mind opens up to the answers. But if you don't ask the questions and you don't feel curious, you don't hear the answer. You hear it from a skewed view. So you don't actually get there. So I love what you're saying about, Finding out why, but listen, be be open to the answer of why, because that's that's where the gold is for you, right. not for them, for you. you I like tell you, feel better. And you might not like the answer. Yeah, but, 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 you won't. Right. <laughs> but you yeah. know, the one thing is this is why I think it's so important because you know we brought up in the discussion before about you know seeing roots. And, and, and watching that unfold in front of your eyes. So I'm somewhere like about seven or eight years old and, I, and I'm watching Roots. And wow, that's, that's just like something that's just, um, is, is very profound for a seven or eight year old to see at that age. But you know what it did for me? And that's why I said, it's not just for it to say, does white people need to see this? No, black people need to see this as well because we don't need to make any excuses about anything. You know, things that have occurred need to elevate us. So what that did for me, I saw that, but I said, you know what? I'm going to know what those people went through. I'm going to know the price that they paid for the freedom that I have, you know? And, and I won't even go back to where they, the civil rights era, 
people that had the had the had the fire hose turned on them. They were bit by dogs that were beat down. You know what? That's not going to be in vain for me. I'm going to remember what they went through to motivate me to do what I'm supposed to do because they did it for a reason. So if my ancestors were kept from reading, I'm going to read. If they weren't allowed to have books and they would get beaten, if they had books, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a million books. So this is why it's important for black people to know their history, their history. And if you know your history, you know where you came from. You know what you need to do. And this is why it's so crucial. So I don't want it to be one sided where we're looking, oh, white people need to just understand it. No, white and black need to understand it. That will make us better. And so that's why it doesn't need to be taken out of school. It needs to be there. So we've had a week to think about what we, you know, think about where we wanted to go next with this discussion. And, you know, I think that we have a real opportunity here to look at our roles as, 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 you know, business leaders, you know, we're running businesses. So that's a, that's a, that's a special position that has uh, a lot of responsibility, a lot of authority, a lot of opportunity that, uh, is unique and you know we can, we could take an hour and talk about all the aspects of that but specifically as it, as it pertains to you know the matter at hand what what uh, can we as as business owners do uh, uniquely that would uh, you know make a meaningful difference well I, like oh. um, Alonso was already saying is uh, for me the very first thing is to open up communication and 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 the other piece of opening up communication is making all of the words that come out be right because as soon as as soon as anybody is made wrong communication shuts down so all of the all of the views being right or at least not wrong you know because they are they are somebody's views whether we agree don't agree don't like it Making them wrong is, I think, a lot of times where the problem is. No, you're wrong. That's not right. That just shuts everything back down again. So opening up communication in a, in a way where all of the words can be said without anybody being bad or wrong is huge. So you that's, really that's need my, to... My, my first point. So I guess there's uh, techniques. I mean, we've got some, some material we're going to be sharing with you in a minute that can be helpful in that regard, basically setting the expectations at the beginning of the discussion and um, just establishing that, you know, we're all trying to, to do something good here. And like last, uh, last week, uh, you, you first thing you started off with, Liz, was, was asking for grace. That, no. Uh, it's 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 easy to step in a hole on some of these discussions, and it's not you know any you know mad and ten. It's just part of the exercise to get to where it is that we want to go. Um, and I want to be able to say all the stuff. I want to be able to say it and have people say, "Okay, mm, that was not right, Liz. That was bad. That was," but still, okay. She asked her grace, so I'm gonna like I'm suspend judgment, maybe. <laughs> like mm -hmm. not, I give her a couple more minutes, right? So that that's that was my whole thing there, and I'm asking again today. I appreciate it again today. I uh, I have a friend. I, uh, we um, worked together many years ago, back when I had a had a real job um, as a young man, uh, right out of high school. He was drafted, went to Vietnam, came back, uh, got a degree in, in in business, and worked in HR. He. Uh, does a lot of work in diversity training, and one day, one day, I'll, I'll see if I can get him on as, as a guest. He's got a uh, lifetime worth of experiences that would be helpful in this discussion as well. But his name is Skip McCall, and he shared this document with me. And he does training for for uh, diversity training businesses, and most of the discussions is that uh, they do. He starts off with this document and everybody in the room signs off on it, which is basically just establishing the ground rules that we're going to be having a discussion. And uh, none of us need to apologize for who we are. We're, you know, a, a, a function of our environment and how we've grown up. And this is where we are at the moment. And 
you know, we can be ignorant, we can, you know, have misunderstandings and we're asking, you know, permission to, 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 to be who we are with our, with our flaws and everything else. And, um, when you're, when you're talking about setting the, the, the stage, is this, uh, what you were thinking Liz, or something along, along these lines? Yeah, absolutely. Tom, um, I actually am uh, arranging for a morning meeting that is not mandatory in my company, but it's open to everybody. And we will have this first. And I, I'm surprised at how many people really want to come. So I just saw this for the first time today and was like, wow, yes. this is like light bulb moment to me, to me uh, or for me. And I just tossed it out. And my people are like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to be part of that which I think goes against what a lot of people think is the truth. I think a lot more people really want to be part of, they want to be part of it. They just don't know how, they don't know how to be part. And they're afraid, not afraid of the people. They're afraid of themselves. Right. Most of the people that I deal with are afraid that they're going to say the wrong thing or they're going to, they're going to make people not like them or they're going to say something that's going to be held against them forever. No, so they're they're more afraid of themselves. And you're the so business I, owner, so you know it's that's it's kind of like a double whammy. You absolutely don't want to be the one to to misstep. I I do it so much, my people are kind of used to it. <laughs> True fact. <laughs> you know what I like about this document? What is great is anyone that's coming into our company and and ourselves as well. We're all we're all seeking. We're all working to be the best us, you know, the best possible version of us. And if we if we set that tone, and then we get this commitment through this agreement, you were at that moment. You're, you're creating an environment of bettering, be, becoming a better person, becoming a better a, a better employee. Because sometimes we're always just thinking about a better employee. You have to have a better person to be a better employee. And I think that's where companies really miss the mark. And that's why emotional intelligence come in into play, because you have big companies looking for IQ, but they weren't looking for emotional intelligence. And this is right here, this, this document, I think anybody that's watching this right now, they should want to use this. And Every, everybody in the discussion signs it and they keep it. It's theirs. That's kind of their affirmation to, to their commitment to the process. So, yeah, I asked, I reached out to Skip after our discussion last Tuesday and said I needed his help. I needed his top three ideas for, for business owners in terms of things that they can do to make a difference. And he came back and said he couldn't do it in three, but he could do it in seven. So we got some 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 bonus uh, ideas here. Before you move on, Tom, I wanted to speak to what Alonzo has been saying a lot of about too. So we have this thing that we use here in our company and also in our coaching. Um, it's called the "Be Better to Get Better" um, diagram, and so instead of trying to make other people better and I, it's right here i don't know if you guys can see it it might be too big there can you see it yep keep it still so it's, it's, try and again talk and be still so basically what it tells you is if you want to make things better don't push don't try to make better you can't make things better you can't make people be better but you can be better yes. and if you be better they get better that's how you make things better, is being better. And that it's really easy. It's these five things. You know, be open-minded, be curious, be accepting, reassuring. We added one. It used to only be five. Oh, care. And then we added self-reflective, um, empathetic and self-reflective. But if you be these things, communication goes so much easier. And, and you, can, you can make bigger inroads by being better instead of trying to make other people better. So I just wanted to speak to that real quick, Tom. We're going to have some pretty awesome stuff to put in our resource page, aren't we? Yeah. That's why I think that's so important to start in the home and with parenting. You know, that environment in the home is, is critical and the upbringing is, is, it means so much. 
if you're actually raising your kids with the right mindset. And the mindset is to be the best you, to be the best person. And that's, and that's just not happening. And some of these things create these, these uh, bad, bad responses and bad comments and bad behaviors and actions. You know, it just starts at home. No, I like that you spoke to that the right thinking is not about anything having to do with color. That it's about okay, being your best out. self. Right. Take yeah. it out. Yeah. Because the color is something that gets mixed in there. It was already a problem before the color. You know, so when you look at people when they have these issues, they had issues before the color thing. The color thing just made it worse. Yeah. I really, um, Tom recommended a book last week, uh, White Fragility. I don't know if any of you guys read it. I read it. And uh, actually, I've read it a couple times now. <laughs> uh, and when I say read, I mean listen to because I, I read my books on Audible. Um, but, you know, that, that was a really good book to read. It really, it really, really helpful. If you haven't read it, you guys, I highly recommend reading that book. It was gave me a lot of opportunity for self-reflection. A lot of opportunity. Something we don't do often, right? Yeah, not as often as we could. That's for darn sure. All right, sorry, Tom, I interrupted you. I'm letting you get back to work. No, that's, this is all good. And this is uh, positive and, and moving in, in, a, in a good direction. Um, these are Skip's seven ideas that that we could be doing as uh, as business leaders. Um, the first one. You know, I look at that and I kind of slap myself in the forehead. You know, we do a lot of work in our coaching, Liz. I mean, you spend a lot of time, you know, helping people understand what their core values are and their culture. And how often does uh, diversity come into to that thought process? Um, not, not often. Not often enough. No. So, um, for starters, that's uh, that's something. And. I guess really it's an opportunity for us, Liz, and some of the, the, the coaching and training we do to, to expand a little bit. Elaborate on that a little bit more. What, what, do you, what do you really mean by that? Liz, you want to help us with this? Um, sure. I, I, I'm, my, I mean, I, I didn't write this, so I'm not exactly sure about what, what is meant here, but how I'm reading this is to, to communicate this information that we value, accept, respect, um, diversity in all people so that it's spoken and it's clearly communicated so that later you can bring it up. Um, my, my thing is if you don't define something up front, then when it happens, it's really hard to come in and say, Hey, you shouldn't have done that. Then, then you're in a bad in, in a bad place. But if you define it up front, makes it really easy to say, hey, remember when we talked about that? Let's do some more of that. When you, when, that's, when, what I, that's what I take it. When you, and, uh, when you explain core values, Liz, I mean, you put it in the context of whenever there are, I mean, so many different dimensions of it, but when, as a company, you're trying to make a decision and trying to figure out the right thing to do. It's the core values that kind of give you the, you know, you go back to that and say, well, how does, Make, and we're solving this problem. We're making this decision. How do our how does that fit with our core values? And what do our core values tell us to do? And if our core values don't speak to things like dignity and respect, and making sure that you know everybody's being treated fairly and equal, regardless, then you know we're we're, we're missing an opportunity. We're, we're our, our core values arguably aren't as uh, comprehensive as they 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 need to be. You, you know what I had what struck me was the people of diversity, because uh, let's take it for example. UPS has a very solid culture value. They went over to Germany, and what they did is they took their values and their culture, and they tried to make it work with the people in Germany, and they failed on all levels because. They had their own culture, they had their own values, but it didn't work for the people of Germany. Hmm. I, I, I can't wait to do a little research on that and hear more about that. That's super interesting. 
And that's why I was looking at the people of diversity because, you know, I think when we do shape it, how are, how are we actually shaping it? Are we recognizing the diversity when we actually uh, create the, the values, the culture? So elaborate on that. I mean, this is a, this is a really complex topic. I mean, we've all gone through the exercise, or most of us, I suspect, have gone through the exercise of defining their core values. I mean, we, Liz has a product, core value cards, that are as a, a tool to help uh, help help identify core values. Um, so whose values are those? I mean, is that, you know, are we doing that in a way to, to be inclusive of, of every, you know, stakeholder of the organization? I mean, isn't, when, when I read this, that's, that's kind of what, what crosses, it's, that's the way I interpret this. You know, you know the, one, the one thing too, when I think about that, one of our values is respect. So people of Latin America, they have their own way of looking at respect, you know? So we had to have a, a, a probably a 20 minute discussion about what they looked at as respect. And it was more or less as about, you need to show me respect because I should be respected. It was nothing about anything of earned respect. It's just, you just give me that respect, regardless of what I do, how I behave, you gotta give me the respect. And we had to spend 20 minutes on really just going through what was meant by respect in our culture, because they had a totally different meaning about respect. That was one of their high They actually liked that one. That was like one of their top, top two. They liked right. respect. And, and they felt as though when they were getting disciplined or there was a consequence, oh, you're not showing me respect. Why? Wow. Okay. You know, that's good. I like that. that I, I mean, I think that goes to you got to be better. You got to get curious. You got to find out why. Because you found out that we had different definitions of respect, <laughs> right? And so we, 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 we got to get on board with, with, with um, both people. We, we both sides have to understand. As business owners, it can't just be laying down the law, right? It has to be laying down the law, but with understanding. Exactly. And like, let's think about something that happens in, in the hip hop community with black people. So you get the money, you get the power, you get the respect. So there again, the word respect. So you can see how it can get twisted. Money, power, respect. And so that again can be interpreted in different ways. So I guess it again is defining. So how you defined it. So that has to be clearly defined because you can actually have your 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 list of values and create your culture. And if you're not properly defining those and thinking about the diversity of people, respect it means something different to that group of people. Because again, yeah. I get the money and I get the power, you need to respect me. Yeah, that's how I read it too. I, I read it with the um emphasis being undefined, right? Where I know that somebody else might read it and the emphasis is on include. Uh, another person might read it with all people, right? So how I read this was about defining the culture, making sure that everybody understands exactly what the culture is, what yeah. it is that I'm talking about, what these words mean, yeah. that yeah, that might be one word, but let me talk to you about th for three minutes about what what this word means in our company. Yes. So, because you're right. I, I think respect is an excellent example of a, a word that can be interpreted completely differently by, and not just cultures, you know, by just two different people, like two different families. One family can think of respect one way and another family a different way. So I, I think defining the culture is huge. Yeah. Communication is another one or integrity. <laughs> if you go down to number six on the idea list, encourage and provide employees the opportunity to get out of their comfort zones and get to know people of different diversity characteristic, of a different diversity characteristic. I love that one. I do too. I love that too. And I like, I like two things about it. Well, I like a lot of things about it, but I really like that it says to encourage them 
and provide the opportunity. Yes. So don't just encourage it, but also provide the opportunity. Be be part of it, which is, you know, why I'm having a, um, an opportunity, an open meeting for everybody to be able to come together and talk about this. We had, a, we had an, an instance that happened, um, and I, I'll share that here. Um, I wasn't going to, but I will now. Um, last week, we had a team in a home, and there was the Confederate flag and a couple of other things in the home, and sparked a, a big conversation. We shouldn't clean for these people. They're racist. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not comfortable being here. And um, so that, that sparked a big conversation in our company, and we're going to talk more about that on, on, um, at, our, at our morning meeting. Uh, because it's not it's not just a matter of making a decision that yeah we don't we don't approve of this so we're going to go against it because you know there's so many things we've had in this past year we had somebody that did not feel comfortable being in a home where they had animals mounted on a wall you know they were big game hunters we had another employee that did not feel comfortable because she smelled alcohol on the breath and they were cleaning house and there was alcohol, a lot of alcohol in the house, and there was alcohol in the breath of someone that was pregnant. Um, so another one where they didn't want to clean because the guy was yelling at the child and cussing, ca calling the name, the child names and cussing at the child. Um, so there's so many of these things. And, you know, how, how do you decide as a business owner? We, we have to meet a lot of different things. Where do we make the, where do we, you know, where do we, hold the line and what things are the ones that we're going to stand for. No, we're not, we're, we're going to stand for this thing. We're not going to tolerate this. What are those things? That's, it's a heavy conversation. Not easy. No. no. But you know, what comes important is when those, when those situations or issues present themselves and we as leaders, they're looking at what decision we're going to make. But if we, we get ahead of it and defined it, then that's easy to make. Yeah. Defining those core values in the beginning, defining the culture in the beginning. That I agree. That's why I like that as number one. Yes. I love that as the number one thing on this list. Having the discussion before it happens. Yes. Yeah. Empower employees to draft a statement of what actions and behaviors are acceptable and unacceptable within the organization. I think that's particularly powerful. I mean, a lot of times people don't even think and do things and say things that, that aren't appropriate. This is an opportunity to give everybody a chance to think and to ask the questions and to raise their awareness of you know, the, the issues and, and how their behavior affects other people. Oh, yeah, because we saw some of these things have occurred uh, by emails. You know, what should you say in an email that's getting sent to coworkers? And there has been in corporate America so many stories where an email got out from even a top executive. And they said something in the email that was very inappropriate and very disturbing and you're scrambling to try to figure out how, how to actually put that fire out. Number three, I think, is particularly powerful. And, and honestly, that's low-hanging fruit for, for us running businesses. Develop and implement a process for responding to actions and behaviors that follow the category of racism. You know, we should have you know a number of policies in place that you know protect people's you know civil rights and keep you know or you know our, our employees safe and this is certainly an important aspect of that i'm not sure if uh this is on the radar screen at the same level as uh harassment and you know sexual harassment and you know some of the other eeoc issues but it definitely needs to be I, I know we have it as part of our policies, um, but it's sort of skimmed over. Um, it, it's like, yeah, 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 and you can't, you know, you can't do any of these things. You can't bully anybody. You can't harass anybody. You can't have any overt signs of racism, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's like that, blah, 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 which 
that's not helpful. No. Encourage and empower people to speak up and speak out when they experience or observe institutional racism. This is this is a, an interesting one. You know, defining institutional racism. I talked to Skip a bit of, a bit about this, and it's like individual racism is usually a lot easier to pick out, see, and identify. Institutional racism is a little more hard to see sometimes, but you know, if you've got practices within your organization, I mean, I don't know, I can use help with this. This is, this is a, this is a, a, a complicated issue. And I didn't, you know, it says good, but exactly how do, how do I, how do you do that within your business? How, how do you, tell your, 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 your employees, if you will, to, to keep an eye out for institutional racism, some examples of that. I guess if you were actually, say for instance, if you work for a company and that company happens to deal with a company that has those type of issues, do you just ignore it? Do you just look the other way or do you bring it to the attention of, of someone in power or someone in a leadership position? Because that's what we're seeing that, um, uh, what was that company that just had an issue? It was um, CrossFit. So you saw companies like Reebok and other companies, like, we don't want to do business with you. So that has to take someone in that company to bring that to the attention um, of the board, take it to whoever that's in charge to make a decision to say, who do you want to align with? Who do you want to partner with? Do you actually want to be affiliated with these type of companies? And I guess five kind of ties into that. Establish racial equity committee committees to respond appropriately to incidents of racism and develop strategies uh, to improve racial equity within the organization. I explained to Skip that, you know, a lot of companies in our industry are relatively small. And, and you know, if you define a committee of like five people, then you you might not even have enough people in the organization to you might not even have five people working. That. Right. But, um, you know, the, the concept, I guess, is, 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 is still sound. And for larger organizations in particular. You know, basically what we're discussing here, Ernie actually uh, brought up a good question. Well, a good statement. What is what is very valid and true? So corporations promote their policies, recognize Juneteenth and so on and so forth, but the actions inside their companies um, oftentimes say otherwise. Yeah. He's spot on. Yeah. Spot totally on. True. And, and, it's, and it's a shame uh, that a company that looks, uh, they're looking for a way to get on this, on this train. You know, right now it's the, this is the, this is the new thing right now. So how do we actually get out as a company and donate money or, or utilize, you know, this symbolic day? And we actually try to say, you know, we for Black Lives Matter. And it's like, where were you before? What have you done inside of your company? Uh, Amazon took some criticism, some, some heat, because um, they were one of the companies that were lacking diversity in their leadership roles. And the company executive suites and the board of directors you're not saying any black people, you know. So, yeah, you can you can talk game, but what are you really doing? And that's why the employees are looking at some of these companies as well as saying, "We want to see what you're going to really do. We're going to see what moves you're really going to make. Are you going to give me a shot? Are you going to give me an opportunity to be on the board? Are you going to look for someone to be on the board of color? Are you going to look to promote somebody of color?" And as, as we said before, are some of these companies going to actually go in, into some of these, these areas where there are extremely intelligent kids and bright kids that's doing phenomenally in, in academics and actually give them an opportunity? Because someone will never know about these kids just because of where they're at in their communities and their school. They're going to, again, know about the kids that's from a private school, uh, some, some some of these schools that are getting recruited by Ivy Leagues, but 
again, are you actually going to go and do any recruiting in those areas? Give any opportunity? Um, we talked about number six. Number seven is identify social justice opportunities within the community and get involved. Um, Skip cautioned and said that this is an area that's important, but you really want to do your homework. You really want to do your research that uh, you know, there's a lot of different organizations out there that are, are active and getting involved and taking on different initiatives. And um, some of them are, you know, positive forces and some of them are maybe not so positive. And you want to make sure that that you're you're getting involved with groups that are in alignment with with your core values and are doing things to build the community up and build people up, rather than to just you know take a take a bad situation and take advantage of it for their own self enrichment, if you will, or their own benefit. Well, and and I want to speak to sort of this idea a little bit more too that. You know, um, and I'm going to speak to, I think you said it was Amazon, that they didn't have any diversity and they weren't doing when you, they're saying all of this stuff, but when you look at what they've done, that it's not panning out. What I'm suggesting for me, for my company, for my people is, yes, look at the past, but only to see where we're going. You, Not everybody has been doing what needs to be done the whole time but it's okay to start today it's right. okay start today right and don't worry that yesterday was trash all right yes yesterday was trash acknowledge that and make tomorrow better not you not everybody started doing worrying about or thinking about or being engaged in this conversation about black lives matter 10 years ago or 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that's okay. Start today. And starting today doesn't make you bad. I mean, yeah. I've seen where people are like, yeah, well, who says, who, who do you guys know that are saying black lives matter today? But a month ago, they were all about all lives matter. I don't care about that. If they're saying black lives matter today, yay. That's good. That's, that's a good thing, y'all. That means... They're advancing and things are better and they're they're learning. They're open, they're curious. It, it can't, not everybody has been perfect this whole time. But if today I'm trying to be better than I was yesterday, isn't that a win? I mean, I feel like that's a win. And if I'm working on being even better tomorrow than today, isn't that another win? Why does it have to be that I suck because yesterday I wasn't as good as I should be? okay i'm getting better i'm getting better tomorrow i'm going to be better than today i promise not perfect I mean, I I that. Yeah. yeah not perfect and tomorrow you know what i might backslide again but i still am planning on climbing up and getting better and if i backslide okay remind me so that i can again go forward right again you have you have to make a decision you're either going to be part of the problem or part of the solution and if you're going to make a decision to be part of the solution, you got to do something, you know. And if you're deciding to you start today, right? And and if you're deciding to to speak up and you've been silent all that time, okay, we welcome that because you've been silent, you know. And you and you are taking a risk because there are companies like Amazon. I mean, again, you're going to have people that don't want to deal with Amazon. Let's think about what happened with Nike, what what, what Kaepernick, man. That uh, Nike took a beating for that. The, I guess it was the next day for the stock on the stock exchange. That stock went bam, plummeted. It went down like 10% drop. But guess what happened? Because it was the right cause, you looked around two weeks later, it shot up 20% more. And they sold a lot of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, someone has to step up and make a mark. You know, Kaepernick took a big hit for that. To go to, to take a knee, he sacrificed, you know, millions to do that. And again, people are going to look at it in a negative way as well. Well, Kaepernick, you're half black, you're half white. Come on, buddy. You know, 
So, you know, it's always people are finding it. Is, was he doing this just for publicity, people were saying? People are always going to have something negative to say. We know this. And find fault with something. We're uh, right up against the hour. Um, any any last thoughts that, that you'd like to share with our audience today? I think I'm, say, I'm, I'm proud of you for keeping us on track, Tom, before Alonzo says his thing, because I would have sworn we'd only been talking 20 minutes. So <laughs> yay, yay for you, Tom. Good job. Go ahead, Alonzo. You know, Liz, you had brought up about the, uh, the Black Lives Matter thing, and Here's the real the real deal on that. Um, when you look at that and say, okay, Black Lives Matter, and then you hear people come back with All Lives Matter. And we went back and we, and again, for people that didn't hear it, it's not that people are protesting saying all lives don't matter. We all know that. That's silly when people do do that response. That's very silly. You know, what's what what's really been addressed at this moment because of what's happening is don't forget about the black lives. Because they seem like, guess what? You're overlooking overlooking us. So, you know, hey, do we matter? That's why it comes to it, it matters, you know? Um, but again, you know, we as black people, we got to do what we got to do, you know? And our job is to get better, not to think that we got to go through and burn down places and tear down things. Do what we need to do to make ourselves more than what we are and to create what we need to create, you know, and not get into all this division. That division stuff, that is not anything that resonates with me. I'm always about unity because, again, there's strength. When we all can have these conversations, when we can all get on one accord, then we're powerful. Thank and you. And our companies do the same thing. Same our, thing. Each individually, our companies can do this. Yeah. So this is our opportunity, and daylight's burning, right? Yep. Well, you know what? Like I said, if we can all uh, make a contribution here to to apply ourselves to making a difference and a commitment to in our companies and our families, then we're doing our part. And Tom, um, I know, I know. Again, you uh, you're you're with the uh, Boy Scouts. Yes. Okay, so when when I was a, when I was a part of again, I told you I got to like Cup Scout then the Weeblows, so I got the Weeblows because I looked around in the Boy Scouts there wasn't that many black kids in this, you know. I was like I would look around I was like one of a thousand when we go to these big events. So again, what can we do? Can we recruit black kids? I mean, it's a pretty cool experience to get out uh, from your environment, your community, and, and see the other parts of the world to interact with nature, to learn uh, skills. I mean, that's huge, but is there any recruiting to go and recruit black kids from anywhere? You know, that's, that's, that's powerful. I remember when I was a kid, they used to have um, fresh air kids. These kids were all in the city. And so we could actually adopt these kids for the summer and you would bring them to the suburbs and they would just be blown away about the difference of the world because they don't get a chance to see any of that or interact with that. So their culture, I mean, their environment is more aggression, a lot of aggression, a lot of built up anger and frustration to what they do. So definitely I would encourage something like just Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. How, how do we get more people of color involved in those things that they can get those experiences? That's a well, And you, you bring up a great, a great point. And, you know, the name of this um, um, Smart Business Moves title today was what are three things you can do? We provided you with at least 10 today. Can you just pick three? You know, what are three things that you can do? Just start. There's, I'm sure there are three that were, that were like, I could do that. That, that seems like something I could do. Go it's ahead. Start it's there. Really pretty easy. They're small steps. It's a good place to yeah. start. Yeah. Don't, yeah. To, no, don't have to change uh, the world in a day. Just take a step. And Tom, if you get one, of those, you get one of those kids, and they're in there. I sponsor one of those kids. I pay for their expense, you know, because those are the kind of things that we can do to to help this thing, you know. Okay, that is uh, okay. Good. Yeah, that's awesome. Now Tom's like thinking. Trying where to can I find? Like, okay, now what am I? How am I going to? Who am I going to find? Where do I look? I don't know. Start, um, with, the start with the employees. That's where we start. What's yeah. close? What's the closest to us? Yeah. 
I'm thinking scouts and school and everything else has been shut down. You know, wow. But we got a, we got we got we got opportunities and scouts are coming a, back. A lot of ways. Yeah. A lot of ways. Um, cleaning business today. Subscribe if you haven't. Email first name last name. Get our newsletters. Stay up to date on all the cool happenings in the uh, cleaning industry. Here's our resource page. I'll drop the link. And we'll add some of the resources that we shared today here at the bottom of the list. And um, tomorrow you'll have your... Leslie is saying that ideas on di diversifying is the topic of her weekly meeting tomorrow. And she's seeking her employees' ideas. Yay. Yay. Okay. It's not not surprising, uh, Leslie. You are are typically one of the people that's at the forefront of of good moves, good business moves. So, I'm not surprised. Okay, so we're four minutes after. So that's uh, puts Sorry. us uh, two minutes past our two minute fudge time. So, uh, thank uh, you guys. Uh, Appreciate you joining us uh, for this discussion. Always, uh, always enjoy hanging out with you guys. Coming over. To your side. Well, <laughs> thanks so much, Alonzo. <laughs> we're, not, we're not done yet. We're this is a, this is a journey. We're we're, we're going to pick this discussion up again. Okay, guys, be safe. We'll see you uh, tomorrow at five Eastern. Bye, y'all.